my dears. Welcome back to Your Menopause Your Way. And you sure are learning a lot about all the things you must consider in order to manage your menopause your way. One of the most critical things about making management decisions is something that I refer to as the balancing act. This consists of balancing one thing against another in order to decide what's best for you. And that's what we'll talk about today. We're embarking on a unit that considers all three of the big diseases of estrogen deficiency together. And they are heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. And despite the fact that these are the three biggest risks for women at postmenopause, most women worry more about breast cancer. So today, we'll do a balancing act between these three diseases here and breast cancer there. In other words, we'll balance the morbidity and mortality of these three big diseases against the morbidity and mortality of breast cancer. Now, morbidity and, mor morbidity and mortality are two words that you often hear together, but they really actually mean two entirely different things. Morbidity is when you aren't well. Mortality is when you aren't alive. <laughs> together they speak volumes about which disease carries the most weight for you. Now, once again, even though this is all in the individual chapters for each disease in my book, you're only going to get this comparative perspective here in this video. Okay, so we're going to be comparing four separate diseases. And whenever you have to compare things, it's good to make a chart. <laughs> so we'll create a chart as we progress. Charts help you see the big picture when they're complete. But they also help you to see things as they stack up so that you see it evolving as you go along. And that's why I like to build the chart as we cover the material. So here are the factors we'll compare for these four diseases. Cause, incidence, morbidity, treatment, prognosis, and mortality. Assessing just these six factors without getting into the details of any of the diseases enables us to easily weigh them against one another. So here's the chart we'll fill in. I'll explain each factor as it pertains to each disease as we go through them. Starting with cause, the whole reason we're bothering with this particular video is to compare and contrast the three diseases that are caused by estrogen deficiency with breast cancer, which is not. And I do not want you to assume that breast cancer is caused by estrogen. It's not. <laughs> there has never been anything definitively to suggest that it is. When we get to the unit on breast cancer, you will discover that it is caused by a big, long list of risk factors, none of which is estrogen. However, many women forfeit taking HRT because they believe incorrectly that estrogen causes breast cancer. So in essence, they're trading off their attempt to prevent breast cancer at the expense of increasing the risk for these three other diseases. And the question for each woman is whether or not that's a good trade-off. So for the cause row in our chart, we're going to just designate estrogen's role in causing each of these four diseases. Heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's are caused by estrogen deficiency. Breast cancer is not. So on a chart, you see estrogen deficiency designated as the cause for the three big diseases, but you see that estrogen is unrelated to breast cancer with regard to cause. The next thing to consider is incidence. As you learned in video number 244, incidence refers to the number of women who develop the disease during a particular period of time. So it's the number of new cases per year. But because it's easier to understand it in terms of the population itself, you'll often see incidence described as the fraction of the population 
who develops the disease. And for purposes of comparing our four diseases, we want to know how many women get each disease. That will indicate how likely you are to get each disease. And it will help you do your balancing act for whichever disease is most threatening for you. So we'll use incidence to indicate the average risks of getting each disease. And the numbers will go like this. For heart attack, one out of three women will have a heart attack after menopause. For osteoporosis, one out of four women will get osteoporosis after menopause. For Alzheimer's, one out of six women will get Alzheimer's after menopause. And for breast cancer, one out of seven women will get breast cancer after menopause, but only if they live past the age of 81. Before age 81, your risk of breast cancer increases as you age from 1 out of 252 at age 30 to 1 out of 25 at age 80. And after age 81, it's 1 in 7. At age 51, which is the average age of menopause, the incidence is 1 out of 35. Only once you reach age 81 does the incidence become 1 out of 7. And because we all want to live past the age of 81, we're going to go ahead and use the lifetime statistic of 1 out of 7 for purposes of comparing our four diseases. So here are those statistics on our chart. Moving on to morbidity. You've learned that morbidity refers collectively to the symptoms associated with the disease. In other words, how sick it makes you. We all know that some diseases make you sicker than others. Some impact your quality of life more than others. So for purposes of our chart, we're going to compare how much each disease impacts your quality of life when you fall prey to it. For heart attack, what if two scenarios may occur? In one scenario, you may have progressive heart disease for years or decades before you have a heart attack. If so, your ability to function normally slowly decreases. First, you have no symptoms at all. Then, you have limitations on your activity level. And eventually, you may have limitations at rest. In the second scenario, you have no symptoms at all until the actual heart attack occurs. And when that happens, you are stopped dead in your tracks, <laughs> literally. That constitutes sudden incapacity. So morbidity for heart attack consists of impaired activity and sudden incapacity. You can have both or just the heart attack itself, which is sudden incapacity. Now, morbidity for osteoporosis is sneaky. There is nothing to let you know you've got it. It's what we call a silent disease. That is, until you sustain a fracture that comes out of nowhere. So with osteoporosis, it's like you go from 0 to 100 in a flash. You don't even know you have it, and then, bam, you're incapacitated and crippled for the rest of your life. Morbidity for Alzheimer's is just plain creepy, if you ask me. It develops over time, revealing no indication that it's there until you have lost almost half of your brain. And then you start showing signs of it. And when you finally do show signs of it, the progression is a steady downward spiral from which there is no return. It's much more than an impairment in your quality of life. It's an impairment of life, period. Now with breast cancer, you don't know you have it until it's large enough to see on a mammogram or feel on a breast exam. But you still feel fine once the diagnosis is made. With breast cancer, the real morbidity is dealing with the fact that you have cancer and enduring the treatment. But there is treatment. So for morbidity of breast cancer, 
We'll put emotional and physical impact of diagnosis on our chart. Because for most women, the emotional and physical impact of discovering that they have breast cancer is more significant than any symptoms from the actual breast cancer itself. So here's our chart. Next is treatment. When it comes to treatment, there are a few different things to consider. The first is whether treatment exists in the first place. The second is whether treatment is accessible. For instance, I've taught you that although there are all sorts of non-hormonal medications for building bone, the guidelines don't consider you a candidate for them until long after you would have wanted them. So this part refers to your eligibility for treatment. And the third thing to consider is the risk or side effects of the treatment itself. In other words, how brutal it is. So when it comes to the treatment for a heart attack, there are all sorts of treatments, both medical and surgical. The problem is that women are not getting the benefit of them to the degree that they should simply because awareness of heart attacks in women is so lacking. So for heart attack, treatment exists, but it's poorly utilized. It seems as though the statin drugs are the only treatments doctors use liberally for women. But generally speaking, if some treatment involves medications, it's not very brutal. If it involves surgery, it can be. For osteoporosis, there is also a vast array of treatment options, but accessibility and eligibility are a problem. And they are not brutal. They are very easy and convenient to take. But despite the ready availability of a vast array of treatments, they are underused resulting in a situation where women are under-treated. And for Alzheimer's, there is no treatment. No matter what you hear about medications for Alzheimer's, there simply is nothing you can do to reverse it. And with breast cancer, treatment exists in many different forms. Some are medical, some are radiographic, some are surgical. And instead of treatment being inaccessible or women being deemed ineligible. With breast cancer, women are routinely overtreated. They get treatment for full-blown breast cancer when all they have is precancer. Now this is due to fear. And it's unfortunate because breast cancer treatments are not a walk in the park. Whether medical, radiographic, or surgical, treatment for breast cancer is pretty brutal both emotionally and physically. So let's fill in the treatment row on our chart. For prognosis, we're addressing the consequences of having had the disease. Where does it lead you? How does it transpire over time? What's the likely outcome? With heart attack, the prognosis of a heart attack in a woman is horrible. That's because most women don't recognize a heart attack as a heart attack, and that makes it very likely that she will not make it to the hospital. If you do survive a heart attack, your health afterward is much more compromised than that of a man, simply because women do not get the same interventions or rehabilitative services that men get. This leads to a very high mortality rate, which we'll discuss next. The prognosis for osteoporosis is absolutely horrific. If you fracture your spine or hip, you will likely be unable to live independently ever again. You will be permanently disabled for life. Why? Because fractures from osteoporosis do not heal. There's no bone there. How can they heal if there's no bone? So you're likely to end up in a nursing home. Go to any nursing home Anywhere in the world, I guarantee you that 90% of the inhabitants will be women who have fractured their spine or hip. And the death rate for osteoporosis and fractures is quite high too. Prognosis for Alzheimer's is one of the saddest things you'll ever see. You literally fade away. The person you once were is erased, although you are 
still alive physically. And you can live for a decade or more with symptomatic Alzheimer's. I call that living as a shell of yourself. All the things that made you, you, disappear. Which some would say is worse than dying. Now the prognosis for breast cancer is excellent if you diagnose it early. And it's most often diagnosed early. Most women survive breast cancer. That's why you probably know more women who are breast cancer survivors than heart attack survivors. So here are these things on our chart. Finally, we have mortality. Here we will list the statistical death rates for each disease. So just as we did for the statistics on incidents, we will indicate how many women die from each disease. This is another factor that will help you do your balancing act for which disease is most threatening to you. For heart attack, the mortality rate is one out of two. This means that one out of every two women who has a heart attack dies from it. Heart attacks are by far the biggest killer of postmenopausal women. Mortality for osteoporosis is one out of five. So one out of four women gets osteoporosis and one out of five dies from it. This means that 20% of the women who get osteoporosis die from it. Mortality from Alzheimer's is 100%, one out of one. Everyone who gets Alzheimer's dies from it unless something else kills them first. And mortality from breast cancer is one out of 29. So of the one out of seven women who get breast cancer at some time in their life, one out of 29 will die from it. So breast cancer is by far the disease with the best survival. So here are those statistics on our chart. So what do you think? When you look at the whole chart, which of these diseases, side by side, holds the most concern for you? If you were to put the three diseases on one side of the scale and breast cancer on the other, which carries the most weight for you? Which side is heavier? This is what a balancing act is all about. Balancing two things on different sides of the scale. It gives you the opportunity to really assess one disease against another. Or in this case, one disease against three diseases. <laughs> of course, none of us wants any of these diseases, but the point of this comparison is to help you see the relative differences between them. So as you look at the chart and use it to do your own balancing act, which disease carries the most weight for you? That's what this education is all about. You can find the chart in the description box that's right underneath the screen, or you can go to menopausetaylor.me, which is my website, and you'll see that chart and all the others. Now next week we'll move on to the second part of this unit and we'll begin our discussion of the three diseases of estrogen deficiency with regard to the estrogen window and HRT. You know where to schedule consultations, menopausetaylor.me. <laughs> you know where to find me and follow me, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You know where to subscribe, right here. And you know I'll see you again in a week. <laughs> Until then, <laughs> bye.